when I was a young boy, there was a war on. And that war was the Second World War, and we were growing up in it. And there were no houses across this country. And what happened was they built a house a day. And then when the troops came home and the people moved from the farms into the cities to work, those houses were there for them. Those houses were supposed to be uh, till the end of the war, then they were supposed to have been taken down. They're still there. They're still using them. They were still made well. Canadians can do it if we want. Canadians can put their minds to it and get this thing solved. But again, I, before I start here, it's you young people that have to look and say, what can you do? How can you make this force um, a place to reckon with, with our, our leadership, both in the federal and the provincial governments and the municipalities? So with the municipalities, the um, commitments that we can do <clears throat> is to uh, facilitate the creation of more rental housing. And this is difficult for us because people are already into these houses. So how do we move them to put new housing in? And that's a struggle that we're working on now. We're going to review the strategies to reduce the cost to develop rental housing, which including making land available. Most cities don't have a lot of land, but what they do have available, they will be looking at to see what can they share with us. Increasing densities. Densities is not a bad word. If done properly, density is not a bad word. It works, okay? And it works because if you look at seniors, most seniors live in a densified place. And they have wonderful homes because they're with each other, they're, they're able to share costs, and uh, it's, a, it's a good lifestyle. And the rest of us have to realize that we have to share the spaces that we live here, especially on the West Coast. The reduced fees, charges, and regulatory requirements, these are in the, the, the codes of our laws and our, our bylaws in the cities. So we have to look at them individually and take care of them. Speeding up the development process, that's difficult. It's very difficult, it's easy to say, but there's so many rules in place that we have to look at them as individual councils and make sure that we can speed up our, our uh, process for the uh, rentals because that's what costs money. Time is money. And then there should be some incentives. And I think Maureen has talked about these incentives that can come both from the federal and provincial governments. Now the nonprofit sector commitment, and that's for them to help us uh, to, to work with the private sectors and to work for collectively to put that affordable housing in place. And it should be a com component. Rental housing should be a component of our entire housing situation and system in Canada. And we should have a, a national housing strategy that includes rental housing and nonprofit and cooperative housing as the components of that. And that's what we're putting together now so that when we go back east, when we talk to the federal government, we'll actually have an, an ask in place that'll show them uh, that it can work. And again, with that, we need the input from everyone. Back to the private sector. Yeah, you reminded me, Wayne, of uh, something we were talking about, densities, and it's one of my favorite stories to basically exemplify attitudes towards density. This happened many, many years ago in Des Moines, Iowa. And Des Moines, if you looked at it from the air, it looked all cookie cutter, subdivision, cul-de-sacs, you know, typical American subdivision type of town, no real center, no real focus. And uh, the council of the day, this is going back probably about 15 years ago now, the council of the day realized it needed some more vibrancy, it needed some more economic activity, but there was nothing really to attract businesses to its to the downtown because you couldn't identify the downtown so they went and they decided well we need we need to a, a, a create sort of a center of focus much like what diane watts is trying to do right now in surrey to create a town center and we want to have some vibrancy which means we have to have more people living there which means we need you know more restaurants and all that so they um uh, they went to the community and of course the community said density, more people living, no way, Jose. Uh, so they hired a, a new planner and this new planner said, I think the most important thing here is we've got to stop talking about, uh, talking to people what uh, we're uh, we mean, we've got to show them. So he had a town hall meeting invited, a good, good chunk of the community came out because this was a real hot issue. And he didn't tell them what the density was, but he took pictures of the way the community existed today which was basically you could see a lot of cars in a driveway and you can see the cul-de-sacs on one end and then on the other end four or five pictures later he showed a picture of very very dense actually it was Greenwich Village you know with uh, lots of street activity and people living about and he didn't ask them which density he preferred he said which lifestyle do you want and you know where in the past 98 percent of the people rejected any form of increased density 
the opposite happened. More people wanted to live where there was action, where there was places to shop, where there was places that to affordable to live, and places where there was a lot of activity, things they could do in the evenings and all of that. So I do think this issue around density, we have to sort of reframe the conversation. We actually have to give people a lifestyle choice, not just that you deal with you know density and more people living in your neighborhood. From our sector, the private sector, we are absolutely 100% committed to finding practical and economically viable ways of building high quality rental housing to meet the needs of all British Columbians. That's our kids, and I'm of a generation too, grandkids, uh, and our, our parents, our seniors, people who are looking for assisted living uh, situations. We need to be able to accommodate everybody in society in a way that's respectful. So we're going to continue to look for innovations, not only in, in design and financing and development opportunities, but we're going to look at in innovations in ways we can work collaboratively together. Uh, in innovative design, I will uh, let you know, I mean, Michael Geller is here and he can tell you about some very interesting ideas they used on top of uh, Simon Fraser Mountain at university. They had lock-off suites in condos and all that. So you can build new and you can be innovative. It's not for everyone, but it does uh, contribute to a whole spectrum of housing needs that we have to consider. One thing we are going to continue to do is we're going to continue to encourage all levels of government to make housing a priority and remove especially the tax impediments and regulatory obstacles that will enable us uh, all to uh, work more collaboratively to create more housing. Now our timeline for doing all this, we, well the work has begun. Uh, we came together and again I'm going to go back to Wayne and the Metro Vancouver Housing Committee for taking the initiative here. They invited, as I mentioned earlier, uh, last September, the um, profit and, and private sector into a meeting. They said, we recognize there's a problem. We want to do something about it. We're serious. So uh, we uh, came together last fall. We had a platform launch in September. Uh, the Metro Vancouver launched its renterspeakup.org on the website. Uh, then uh, the coalition formally launched in October. We had a meeting with Minister Coleman last fall uh, and were encouraged by his agreement to have the province support the platform that we created. Since then, we've had a number of meetings. Uh, I, I met with uh, Minister Finley's policy director via conference call, Jim Miller. Uh, Jim's a very important player here. He understands, he gets the issues around federal tax policy. I think it's important that we continue to keep him informed of our progress. Uh, we've had a meeting with the Liberal Caucus. Uh, we're going to bring our uh, our cause uh, back to the federal level uh, through meetings with Stockwell Day and Minister Finley's office. All of this uh, is important. Um, and it's probably a good year to do that. I mean, we, there's a possibility of, if not one, maybe three uh, elections coming up. It's a good year to remind uh, politicians just how important housing is to all of us. So. Um, we're going to do a call to action, and this is where we need your help. I, I think one of the uh, things that I wanted to go back, and we think that we live in the most lovely uh, city in the world, and we do, but in the, in the world we were no, voted number one, except uh, a lot of the people who are here can't, don't, can't appreciate it because they don't have the right living accommodations. So the only two cities who are above us is Hong Kong and Sydney, Australia. The rest of the, the world is below us in costs for housing. So although we live in a beautiful spot, we have to make sure that it's acceptable for everyone because it'll make the lifestyles for all of us uh, to be better. So this coalition has come together and we're going to advocate for the changes that will stimulate rental housing, adequate rental housing, and something that we wouldn't be ashamed to live in and one that we wouldn't be afraid to have our children grow up in. That's the goal. So individually we can fight for change, but individuals are very difficult to get anything that happens. You need to be collectively together. And so this room today and the people that are sitting here today, we're asking you, join with us, be part of it, because every little voice that comes together is a large scream. So we want to get to have all of us doing that together. So we're asking for your support, and we want you to uh, to join with us in any manner that you can with through your organizations and let us know uh, what you can do and we'll be there with you. So thank you very much. Yeah, and uh, I just wanted to um, 
leave uh, with uh, another story. Uh, this is another real life story, and uh, this uh, relates to San Diego back in the mid 1990s. And um, UDI was asked to come down by council to take a look. Um, at the downtown area around Horton Plaza and the waterfront in San Diego. And the problem that was, San Diego is a beautiful city, but it was starting to uh, reach a, um, urban decay uh, status. And what was happening is the people who were working in the banks, the taxi drivers, the people who were the service workers, the office workers, could no longer afford to live uh, close to where they worked. And so they were commuting many times, uh, an hour and a half, two hours a day, to find affordable place to live. And the jobs that they were working in were not high paying jobs. So what tended what ended up having happening was that people ended up finding work closer to where they could afford to live, which left people, the stores, the offices, uh, you know, empty. They had no workforce. So we went down there and we were asked by council to take a look at the situation. We could identify the problems right away, uh, high land costs, high regulatory costs, uh, no commitment to making sure that there was housing available for all the workers in the community. So um, I guess the grass is always greener. So council listened to us, even though their own uh, development community had been telling these things for years. Um, and so we went down there and helped them identify things that they could do to reduce housing costs. And today, if you go down to San Diego, you take a look around there. If you look at all those wonderful buildings, they're basically built by Vancouver developers who went down and invested in San Diego. So the moral of the story is, is that we need to pay attention. We need to pay attention to housing costs because it influences every aspect of our lives. It influences where we're able to work. It influences how close we can be to our grandchildren. Mine's, in, mine's all the way out in Abbotsford. That doesn't please me. Uh, but it, you know, we have to pay attention to these dynamics uh, because housing is important. It is critical. So we like to hear your stories. We like to hear some suggestions for, from you. And quite frankly, we would like your support. Uh, when we go and promote a, a rental housing, either councils come up with a housing plan or the industry comes up with a plan to build housing, we need people to say, yes, rental housing is important to this community. Let's make it happen.